Okay, hello and good morning everyone. Welcome to JFD Traders Espresso with me, Dario Sunchaus, because today is the 6th of um, May 2020. So yep, welcome everyone. Welcome to this Wednesday's um, morning recorded session where we're going to have a quick look at the markets, a few of the charts, the usual stuff. Um, but before we do that, as always, let's quickly have a read through our risk disclaimer. So the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation should not be considered as such and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product as always a few seconds for you to read the rest and we can continue Okay, so now then, uh, just before we jump into the charts, quick mentioning of our JFD YouTube channel, to which you can always subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos. Um, and of course, our JFD Bank website, and specifically our JFD research page, which we update on a daily basis. So yeah, feel free to um, to visit us here on jfdbank.com and click on the research tab right there on the top. So. So yeah, I believe you can find this useful. Um, now then, uh, Let's quickly update this number. This is the figure from yesterday's uh, when I was doing the trader's tea time. Um, so let's have a look what's happening here globally, how much the number has risen by. Um, okay, so the number has gone up by about 60 something, 60, well, 63,000 uh, new cases. And of course, the, the amount of deaths now, the most important is that, uh, well, one of the most interesting things is that UK has overcame, overcome the overcome Italy by amount of deaths, um, and uh, while still staying in fourth place overall in with the in terms in terms of um, in infected cases. So uh, in it. Spain and Italy, for example, do have more inf uh, cases, but they have less deaths than UK. So. Well, I mean, um, well, I mean, this is not good for UK, of course. Uh, doesn't look very good from the side, um, and well, hopefully they manage to uh, control that number soon. But uh, for example, for now, Europe uh, is managing to uh, to fight the the problem. Um, right. Um, okay. So now then, uh, jumping into a few charts, um, looking at this picture here, the German DAX, uh, you can see that yesterday it closed in the positive territory slightly. Um, however, still remained um, still remained below this uh, key area of resistance uh, near the 10,820 zone. So in a way for us to um, get comfortable, uh, still the same rule applies of uh, the one that I've mentioned uh, yesterday. We need to see a push above the uh, 10,820 zone in order to start considering higher levels. For now, it's the, the price is stuck below that and looking at the cash index right now, the, the cash index is currently ba uh, floating around the 10,700 level. So slightly below where it closed yesterday, but still kind of above the 21 day EMA, the one that I kept talking about because uh, this 21 day EMA, um, well, can, for now, it seems that it continues to provide decent support. So let's see if it can continue doing that. Um, in terms of the downside, we need to see a drop below the 10,280 uh, zone in order to aim for lower levels. Uh, the FTSE 100, so uh, this one pushed higher as well. Um, however, still also closed below this territory, the one that I talked about, the 5,895 zone, we need to see a break above this and ideally a daily close above this territory in order to consider uh, a, poten a potential move higher. Um, however, for now, we're, like I said, we're not going to do anything. We're just going to continue observing this one. Um, our our alternative scenario is a little bit on the cautious side here, the, the 5,500 level, a break of which we need to see uh, in order to aim for lower levels because for now, um, yeah, it's further away from there. Uh, so let's see if, if the index can push a little bit higher. Looking at the cash index, uh, we can see that the price is currently balancing at around 5,840 zone. So just basically slightly fractionally below the 
yesterday's close. So we'll we'll continue monitoring this one. A uh, quick update on silver. Um, not much has changed here since last time I looked at it. Um, the same idea remains. Uh, just wanted to, like I said, quick, have a quick update on, on silver. Um, and uh, we're waiting for a clear break through one of these levels um, through either the 1450 here on the downside and the um, or the 15.44 on the upside. So um, also something to kind of probably maybe keep in mind. Um, now we could draw a potential maybe triangle here, but to be honest, it's not a very clear one. So that's why we're going to stick to the levels instead. Um, we'll stick to this little kind of range idea uh, for now. And then, yep, we'll wait for a clear break through one of these levels before considering a further directional move. Um, Brent oil. Now, Brent oil, I talked about this one in, uh, on Monday and I was telling you guys to keep a close eye on this barrier, uh, the 27.18. And then when once we got it, we got a break above it. What I was saying that this increases the chances of a potential further move higher where the next potential, uh, where the next possible target could be around the 31.56 level here. As you can see, the, the commodity managed to reach this area. And today we're seeing a bit of a correction, which is quite healthy, I would say. So it's all fine. But let's see if the uh, if the commodity can continue pushing further north. Um, the next target for us is around the 36.10 zone. Uh, that's marked by the highs of the 13th of March and near the highs of 8, 2nd of April and near the high of 9th of April. So very important level here. Um, but we would like to see um, we would like to see first a nice good push back above this territory, above this 31.56 territory. If so, um, or I. Ideally, we would actually prefer to see a push above the recent high here, uh, which is around the 32.21 zone. That's the, the high of this morning. And if we do get a push above this, then yes, it increases the chances of a possible move towards the 36.10 zone. So keep your eyes on this one. Uh, like I said, keep your eyes on these uh, on these levels here. Uh, for now, everything's looking quite interesting, but let's not forget that overall we're still within a downtrend. So, um, well, I mean, this this move higher, if we do see another move higher, this move higher could still be seen as a te as a temporary correction before another leg of selling. Um, if by any chance this decides not to travel higher and starts drifting uh, south straight away here and falls back below the 27.18 territory. Now this is where, where we will start considering lower levels again. We will aim for the 23.20 zone, which is the high of the uh, 23rd of April and then we'll, we could go further down. But again, uh, for now, be very careful and continue observing the price action. Uh, Ripple. Now, Ripple is, um, well, on one hand, you could say that maybe it's coiling up here. We can, we can possibly draw a triangle here. However, uh, for now, we cannot really do anything. We need to continue observing these levels that I talked about previously. The uh, 0.2163 on the downside here, if we do get a drop below this, uh, this would also place the price uh, below the uh, all the EMAs here, the, the 100 and the 21 day EMA. And then, yep, <laughs> excuse me, uh, further declines could be possible. Um, in terms of the upside, we need to see a nice, good, strong move above the 200 day EMA, and then we will aim for higher levels. Until then, we cannot really do anything here. Um, and uh, although, yes, we could say that it's above, uh, it's trading still above the, a, uh, an upside support line here. Uh, which, to be honest, is a little bit on the tentative side. So something like this, we can we can say that yes, it, while it's trading above the subside line, we will remain positive. Um, yes, true, but uh, preferably just to be on the safe side. Let's wait for a push above the 200-day EMA, and then we could uh, target higher levels. Again, guys, for now, it's like I said, it's, it's very tricky. Um, but um, if we wait out, we might uh, get a good return. Uh, USDCHF. Now, here I talked about yesterday about this idea where if we uh, we see a nice good move above the uh, the 100 EMA here, which coincides with the uh, 0.9713 zone, then yep, higher levels could be met. Uh, for now, you can see that. 
Um, yes, everything's kind of working according to plan. We are moving towards the upper upper bound of the range, uh, which is around the 0 0.9797 zone. And uh, yep, from the very short term perspective, we will continue targeting that area. But uh, from a more medium term uh, perspective, well, we would need to see a clear breakthrough one of these uh, highlighted areas in order to aim for the next directional move. Um, for now, like I said, from the very short term perspective, yes, we are leaning a little bit more to the upside as long as the uh, the rate remains above the 0 0.9713 territory or in other words, this 100 EMA here. So if it continues to balance above it, then yep, there's a good chance for this one to drift further north. USDJPY. Uh, so this one uh, is shifting lower. So the this is where it's very interesting how uh, these two are behaving, the USDCHF and USDJPY. So we can see that uh, the Japanese yen is on the stronger side. And uh, although both are considered to be safe havens, the, the Swiss francs and the Japanese yen, but the Japanese yen is attracting a little bit more attention. So uh, looking at this picture, this is what I talked about uh, recently where I was, when I was covering USDJPY I was saying that keep an eye on the uh, this barrier here the 106.36 zone because if we get a drop below this then yes this would confirm a forthcoming lower low and further declines are possible for now we're seeing that violation of this territory however as you can see the bulls are trying to push the pair uh, kind of back above it but uh, let's continue monitoring this let's continue looking at uh, this picture uh, like I said this 106.36 zone uh, it's getting is getting violated right now so if we get a further move below this then yes uh, we will then aim for the 105.94 zone which is the high of the 10th of March and then uh, we could see maybe a test of the 105.12 territory here which is the low of the 16th of March so we'll keep an eye on this one for now like I said, we're more bearish than bullish, and uh, let's see how all this is going to play out here. In terms of the upside, now previously I talked about the 108.08 .08 level, but to be honest, given that it started shifting further further to the right, um, in a way, what we could do here is start looking at higher levels if we get a break above this barrier, the 107.50. If we do get a push above that, that area, then yep, higher levels could be met, so keep your eyes on this one. GBPJPY, quick update here. Um, finally, we're violating again this territory, the 132.44 level that I talked about recently in my one of my videos. And uh, now, I mean, what I was saying previously that if we get a drop below this, then yep, uh, we could maybe consider further declines. Ideally, we would prefer to see a daily close. Now, yesterday the the pair came close um, to closing below that area, but uh, it still didn't do so. Uh, today we're seeing a decline here. However, don't get me wrong. Uh, we need to wait for uh, to, to see how this day is going to end because we don't want a similar scenario as we had here, for example, on the 21st of April, on the 22nd of April, and on the 29th of April, where we did get a false breakout here. It seemed that the uh, the pair is willing to drift further south, but then it quickly reversed, and look what happened. So that's why, guys, let's wait for a daily close below this. Uh, GBP USD. So here the situation is a little bit difficult, I would say. Uh, we're not doing anything here, we're just observing because what we need here uh, in order to, let's say, for example, to consider higher levels, we need to see a push above the 1.2648, 50 territory, somewhere around here, marked by the highs of the 14th of April and the uh, 30th of April. Uh, if we do get a push above this, this could also place the, the rate above the 200 EMA here, and maybe more buyers could see this as a good opportunity to step in. So that's why I wait for a break above this and then we could maybe consider like I said higher areas in terms of the downside uh, we would first although this upside line is a very tentative one we will wait for a break above uh, below it um, and uh, also in addition to that we'll wait for a drop below this this area right here uh, the uh, 1.2247 zone which is the low of the 21st of April so uh, keep your eyes on this one uh, we we'll, it for now, like I said, we're neutral and just we're observing the, the, the price action. Um, Euro GBP. Now, this one uh, continues to range. And uh, if I jump into a four hour chart, um, so basically, you can see here clearly how uh, annoying it is, to be honest, because it's not really doing anything here and it continues to move um, sideways. So basically, for now, uh, it's 
it's stuck somewhere around here. Uh, let me just quickly mark this one. So it's stuck basically roughly um, above the 0 0.8680 territory, so approximately around there. Um, it still cannot overcome this area, so we're keep we're keeping close eye on this. Uh, of course, on the upside as well, it's struggling to move above this little territory near the 0 0.8864, 65 zone. Um, so basically, in other words, it's in a range. So for now, we will uh, we'll continue monitoring this 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 area, this this whole kind of sideways activity. But once we get a nice drop below the 0 0.8680 zone, then uh, yes, and if we to be honest, if we get it at least a four hour candle close uh, then we'll start considering lower levels because this has been uh, running here for quite a while now so this range has been in play for roughly from around well uh, from around the beginning of April basically so yeah uh, if eventually it gets break through one of these levels then uh, and especially if we get if we see a four at least a four hour candle close uh, outside of this little range, then yep, uh, a further directional move could be considered. And finally, Euro USD. So I'll stick to this uh, this four-hour chart as well. So um, the idea still remains the same that we're keeping a close eye on this little range. Um, but uh, let me actually just jump back into a daily chart. So uh, it's getting closer to the lower side here. Now, what I was talking about previously was that if on uh, when I was looking at the daily chart of Euro USD, uh, what I was saying that if we get a good move below the 21 day EMA, then it increases the chances of a possible move lower here where the next um, where the next target could be around the 1.0777. Uh, so in a way, uh, yes, for now, from the very short term perspective, we are leaning more towards the downside. Um, but from the medium term perspective, we would like to see a clear break through one of these highlighted areas. Uh, in order to kind of examine a further directional move for now. From the very short term perspective, yes, we are leaning towards the downside, but we'll be very careful near this territory, near the 1.0777, and uh, then we'll take it from there. So guys, I hope you found it useful. Thank you very much for sticking around and watching it till the end. If you want to join me later on at my traders, uh, tea time is always 13.15 GMT. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you for your, for your uh, views and your likes, guys. I really appreciate that. So uh, That means a lot to me. So Hopefully you you will enjoy my trader's tea time as well later on, 1315 GMT. But for now, guys, stay safe, uh, both health-wise and market-wise. And, uh, yep, have a wonderful trading day. Bye-bye.